Um, I think I think reasonable people can disagree on aspects of a trade deal. Uh, there's a lot of history in, in Parliament about uh, constructive debates that have gone back and forth about different trade deals. What we have seen, sadly, is outrageous hyperbole from members of the government uh, trying to say that constructive suggestions uh, or, or disagreements about aspect of a trade deal is, is tantamount to not supporting Ukraine uh, and even going further to say somehow that that uh, our, our opposition to uh, the, the carbon tax provisions in this bill is somehow supporting Russia. These have been outrageous, offensive, and wrong comments from the government, uh, a government that is, that is uh, increasingly desperate uh, and is trying to use these outlandish accusations uh, to cover for their own general incompetence. Uh, Conservatives have put forward many constructive proposals uh, related to supporting Ukraine that government members have rejected. On March 29th of last year, for example, uh, we proposed visa-free travel for people from Ukraine. That was supported by the NDP and the Bloc. It was a motion adopted by a majority of the House, opposed by the Liberals, and never implemented. Members across the way voted against our proposal for visa-free travel for Ukrainians. We put forward a motion at this committee to expand the scope of the bill uh, to uh, include provisions that would facilitate weapons um, Wep increased weapons exports to Ukraine. Uh, Liberal members have opposed our efforts to add amendments that would support increased weapons exports to Ukraine. Uh, last year as well, uh, the Liberals granted a sanctions waiver to Russia, allowing the export of turbines to Russia uh, to facilitate the export of natural gas uh, from, uh, from Russia to Germany. Uh, bad for Canada's natural gas sector, of course, but also bad for Ukraine. And at the time, this was the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, the ambassador from Ukraine uh, came before the committee, um, uh, denounced uh, those, those permits. So if we go through the Liberals voting against visa-free travel for Ukraine, the Liberals granting uh, sanctions permits to Russia to allow the export of Russian natural gas to fund the, the war machine. Uh, and just in the last, in the last week, uh, Liberals uh, blocking our amendments on uh, on weapons manufacturing, these are these are clear examples where um, where wep where the liberals have not sided uh, with what we believe to be the interests of Ukraine, and yet we haven't resorted to the kind of hyperbolic uh, accusations that that they have uh, simply uh, over um, a a disagreement about a, a, a trade deal, and this shows. Uh, frankly, the divisiveness and the desperation of the government, uh, a government that is unwilling to defend their failing energy policy uh, and is, is uh, desperate for distractions. Uh, on the motion specifically, here, here's why this motion is important. So the process is that committees decide which amendments to consider or not. That's up to the committee to decide. Uh, and there are cases, for instance, where a chair may rule something inadmissible, but the committee may decide to consider that anyways. Um, but it's ultimately the speaker, when the bill is tabled in the House, the speaker looks at the version of the bill, and if a member objects to certain amendments because they, they, they view those amendments as having been out of scope, then at that point the speaker will make a ruling and can strike out certain, certain amendments. However, that issue only comes up if a member raises it in the House. So I'm calling on all members here today. If you believe that expanding weapons exports to Ukraine is important, uh, I have six amendments that would, that would constructively and effectively do that. I would like to move those amendments. I'd like to be able to add those amendments to this bill. Um, even if they are notionally out of scope, those amendments can proceed as long as no member objects to their inclusion. If, if in the House at, at report stage a member rises and objects to the inclusion of those amendments, um, then the speaker uh, will, uh, will rule on their procedural admi admissibility. But the committee can, as per my colleague's motion, consider those amendments. They can adopt those amendments. Those amendments can proceed in the version that this, of the bill that's referred to the House. And, um, and this is not a, an, an idle or an abstract consideration. I have before us, and they've been distributed to members, uh, six different amendments that would give real effect to the, to the need to get uh, critical lethal weapons into the hands of the Ukrainian army to a greater extent than we have in the past. These amendments would matter. They would actually help Ukraine win the war against Russia. Uh, so for all the members that have, uh, that have been hyperbolic in their commentary over the, last, uh, over the last week, do the right thing. 
uh, support these amendments and support this motion that will allow these amendments to go forward because because it is, it is weapons and not a carbon tax. It is these amendments. It, it, is, it is changes that will concretely uh, give life to, to efforts to, to get more weapons into, into Ukrainian hands that will actually have a, a concrete and meaningful impact on the outcome. So I, I encourage all colleagues to support this motion. Thank you.